Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's video, I'm working on my first Warhammer 40k miniature. This Necron from Warhammer's latest set, Indomitus, with the goal of getting this done in under an hour. When it comes to Warhammer miniatures, I understand the desire to get a table-ready miniature that looks good in as short of a time frame as possible. What makes this tutorial different is instead of having you race across the model trying to paint all of the different elements as fast as you can, we are going to focus our effort on drawing interest to specific parts of the model and making sure our eyes go to those elements first. You can use this idea on any miniature you paint. Any elements that you want to draw the eye to Make them brighter and spend more time on them. Any areas that you want your viewer to skip, just paint them dark and people will ignore them. This is a great way to speed up any miniature that you're painting. Place your time and effort on the most important elements and ignore the rest. On this miniature, I'm going to focus on the sword and gun as well as those dome structures on the miniature. This paint job took me about an hour but if you were painting a lot of them at once, you could definitely paint faster. Also, there were a few mistakes that I made that since you'll be able to follow my advice, you won't have to worry about. I began by airbrushing my miniature completely black. This will work as my base color for the miniature. There are a lot of nooks and crannies, so take time to coat the entire miniature. Next, I'm mixing several shades of my armor color with a mixture of black and Runesfang steel from Citadel. Because I'll be dry brushing this miniature, I am not going to be thinning it down. I'm going to be mixing the black and Runesfang steel straight from the pots because I want a thicker consistency of my paint. As a side note, I recommend having two different cups that you're going to rinse your brushes off. One for metallic paint and one for non-metallic paint. Otherwise, the metallic pigments tend to stick to whatever brush you put in that paint cup and tint whatever other paint you're using with that same metallic sheen. Hi, cardamom. Hello, pumpkin. Did you just come to visit? Oh no, you came to shed. Why is it you only sit on my lap when I'm painting? It's the only time you're here. Oh gosh! Ow, oh, good fuck! Shut! Ah, fuck! Cardamom, what the hell? Oh, shit. That was fun until the panic happened. Taking my dome brush, I'm going to dip it into my darkest color, dab the majority of the paint off on a paper towel, and begin to dry brush onto the miniature using a light swiping motion. Though the majority of the light on this miniature is going to be coming from the OSL, I decided that there would still be some amount of ambient light in this scene, so I'm going to go ahead and paint the majority of the miniature with this color. Stepping up one level of paint, I begin to focus my highlights where the OSL will hit from his weapons. I continue on this way, quickly dry brushing up one level in brightness with lighter and lighter passes of my brush, until I was only highlighting the closest areas to the weapons with a pure runefang steel. After I built all the way up to my pure runefang, it was time to mix in my runefang with white and more deliberately begin placing my highlights. How do I know where to place my highlights when I'm doing OSL? Well, it's pretty easy. Take your miniature, hold it up to your face, and act like your eyes are going to be the source of your light. Wherever you can see will be lit by that OSL. For my hand-painted highlights, I begin by thinning down the paint. Since I'm applying this with a normal brush, I don't want the same thick consistency that I use for dry brushing. I'm starting on the thigh, layering up my highlight by following the overall shape of my element. I begin with my 
darkest white using a pretty rough application and I'm going to be layering up to my brighter highlights. Remember that layering is like a pyramid and you're going to be applying a lighter color on top of your first layer in a smaller area but still the general same shape as the layer below it. I'm taking a moment and I'm going to be brushing some of the blades on his hand. Since this is a speed paint, I'm only going to be painting the inside and not the outsides of the model because I feel like that's just a quick way to save time. I place my darkest Runefang black mixture on one edge of the blade and then apply pure Runefang steel on the other side of the blade. Then I am going to quickly wet blend them together so that they reach in the middle and there is a smooth gradation from dark to light. I'm then going to do this same idea, but reversed on the other side of the blade. So one side is going to be black to steel and then the other side is going to be steel to black. I'm doing a bit of extra work on the helmet, following this amazing piece by Damien Rich on Instagram. Finding a reference photo for the most difficult parts of your miniature is going to help you paint a lot faster. My helmet is already done in a base medium silver, so I'm going to be taking my darker silver and painting in the concave surface of his helmet on this side, as well as adding a brighter white helmet to the top of his helmet. Onto the sword. My plan from here was to build up a gradient using white ink as well as black and gray airbrush paint using my airbrush. However, my airbrush and I were in a bit of a tiff on this day and the airbrush didn't really want to cooperate. It really just needed a deep cleaning, but I didn't want to do that and I figured I could just fix it later. Which was a mistake. Fix it now. Never think that you can fix something later when you could fix it now. You're going to save yourself so much time and effort. If something is wrong, fix it now. Of course, none of this mattered because I ended up needing to go back over it anyway because my bright green ink was so much more opaque than I was expecting it. But as a general rule, fix it now. Anyway, I moved on to spraying in the highlights on my sword with my lime green ink. This is lime green from Dayla Rowney. This is much more opaque than the usual inks that I get from Daily Rowney, so I needed to treat this more like a paint instead of a translucent ink. When applying this to my model, I thinned it down quite a bit with airbrush thinner and it was still pretty dang opaque. From here, I began to lightly spray this lime green mixture across my miniature. Focusing on the weapons and the curved domes on his armor, Next, I add forest green and black ink from Scale Colors Intensity Scent to my lime green to create my darker transition color. Remember that light changes color and intensity as it moves away from its source. I first use this on the sword to replace the darks that I had lost with the opaque of my lime green ink. Then I spray it on lightly at the edges of my OSL to create that transition I talked about previously. By hand, I'm going back in and I'm going to add any other intense bright green highlights that I might have missed with my airbrush. I begin by layering on a darker green on the handle of his axe and then highlighting that up with my lime green that I used in my airbrush on my first pass. To re-establish the blade as the most interesting part of this miniature, I'm quickly painting the panels of his axe with my white lime green mixture. I'm then going to be doing a little bit of edge highlighting on the axe as well as a few other places around the model.
As always, I hope that this was useful and helpful to you. Let me know how you think I did on my first 40k miniature. It is my hope that this tutorial will help you create table-ready miniatures rather quickly that will be eye-catching and a bit different. If you like what I do here, you know the drill. Subscribe, follow on Instagram, Patreon's a thing. I hope that you enjoy my content. Please feel free to comment down below. Take me on Instagram. I love to see what you're doing, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.